Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. So today I actually wanna take you through my journey of buying a new stock in my M1 finance portfolio. I think this would be kind of fun for us to kind of go through this journey together. And I'm actually kind of wanting to take my M1 finance portfolio in a new direction. And what I mean by this is actually creating a dividend portfolio to be able to earn dividend income on a regular basis. Now, if you're not too familiar with dividend income, essentially what it is, is me owning shares in companies that pay out dividends on a regular basis. So for the very novice investor, it's usually better to go with ETFs or mutual funds when it comes to investing, because it's a whole plethora of companies meshed together, where buying individual companies by themselves is a lot more risky. But if you're doing it over time and you build up the portfolio yourself, it essentially equates to the same thing. The reason I kind of want to do this is because I've gained a lot more information over the years and I kind of want to start dabbling more into this as well as I just love paying attention to this stuff every single day. And if by chance you are new here on this channel, we make videos about personal finance and also investing videos like this. And if you want to see more videos like this, there's two things you could do. One, watch as much of this video as possible. YouTube will really tell me that you guys like this, but then also let me know in the comments down below. Do you want to see more of these type of videos where I go more in depth with my investing portfolio? What my plan is for the next couple of weeks is actually make a video every single week and showing you guys a new purchase that I'm going to be making in the stock market to build up my dividend portfolio. So make sure you're subscribed if you're not already so you guys can get those updates to see the different companies I'm going to be investing in. So we're going to be using the platform, as I mentioned, M1 Finance. If you don't know about the investing platform too much, I'll actually put a link in the show notes down below to my video about the like pros and the cons and showing you the full actual like desktop version of M1 Finance, as well as a link down below to sign up for M1 Finance if you want to sign up as well. Now that is an affiliate link, which means I do make a small commission for people signing up, but I would definitely not promote anything I don't personally use myself or actually like because I wanna make sure that you guys are utilizing something that can really benefit your financial future. So let's go ahead and actually pop up the app here on screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and load up M1 Finance. And as you can see here at the very top, we're gonna to kinda of just go over a few things briefly. Now on my portfolio, I only actually have three holdings right now. So I have currently, as you can see at the very top, a total of $165.35. It's currently down because of the Tesla situation that's been going on, um, but it's down about $7, which is 4.3%. Now, for anybody that's gonna comment, I know that this is not a lot of money, but one, that's the beauty of getting started with investing is you can start pretty low. M1 Finance requires $100 down for the first deposit, but then after that, you can put small increments like 10 bucks every single week, like I'm planning on doing. So we can grow slowly, but then that can also eventually lead to us being able to really start investing heavily over time as we learn more, as we start earning more, and as we start you know, actually paying more attention to the things that we're doing with investing. So the three funds that I'm currently in right now, as you can see, are Vanguard S&P 500, which the ticker number is VOO. I also have Microsoft in here, the ticker number SF sorry, MSFT. And then I also have a small portion in Tesla, which is ticker number TSLA. Now I know Tesla is not a dividend stock, but I just want to have a goal of owning one full share of Tesla over time. The way it's going down in the market, that might happen sooner rather than later. But all jokes aside, those are the three companies or funds, I should say, I am fully invested in as of right now. So what my plan essentially is, is to actually start diversifying myself instead of going into an ETF. So I'm gonna be buying individual shares in companies as they pay out dividends. And my goal is to actually essentially have my own ETF that I build myself for the companies that I want to be invested in. Like I said, this takes a lot more work and a lot more dedication. So if you don't have the time for that, it's probably best to start looking at ETFs or mutual funds. VOO is a great example of a great ETF to be part of, which is why I had ownership in it. Now, full disclosure here, when it comes to my retirement, I have that all in ETFs. But when it comes to my individual investing, I wanna kinda do a little bit more of my own work because again, I personally like to do that. 
So just keep that in mind when it comes to you investing. Uh, and full disclosure, because I probably should mention this, I am not a financial advisor. So just take these videos as just, you know, entertainment, uh, but not any type of recommendation for you to actually invest in these companies that I am personally investing in. So the goal is to actually have my target go lower and lower for my Vanguard, which means that my position in them is going to be less. And what I'm gonna be doing is adding that new fund every single week, um, where I'm gonna be adding about 10 bucks, which should obviously take majority of that money into the new fund. But if anything else, it's going to readjust everything else that I currently have. So what we're gonna do is actually go through and purchase this new fund. And again, we're gonna do this here in real time, so you guys can see which company I'm going to be going with. Um, but make sure you're sticking around for the next few weeks to see the different companies as I keep adding more and more. So we're going to hit the plus sign here on the bottom right. Now, before I go into anything more, um, just to keep in mind, I already did my research on which company I'm going to buy. I didn't just go ahead and choose one out of, you know, randomness. I actually did my due diligence, did a lot of research beforehand. So that is one thing I highly recommend you do before making the decision on buying any type of company, even if you know that brand. So with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and hit edit pie, mm, pie. And then we're gonna hit that plus sign uh, right above the Vanguard ticker right there. So if I hit that plus sign, I'm gonna be able to add a new slice to this yummy pie. So what we're gonna be doing is I can either scroll through and look at the popular funds, which this one is going to be a popular fund, or I can type it in in the search bar. And if you are not familiar with the platform as much, you can also look at the funds, which are like the ETFs we were talking about earlier. And those are gonna be set up right here. Um, you can actually look at expert pies. Um, you can also go to a watch list and then you can go to your pie as well. So if we go back to the stocks, I'm gonna go ahead and type in the company. Maybe you guessed it if you had it uh, you know, in your mind of what it was gonna be. But this one is ticker number DIS, which is Disney, which I know most of you guys probably know what Disney is or who they are, but I've definitely done a lot of research and you know, they, they're definitely a very strong company. Uh, they've been paying out dividends for a very long time, um, which is a very important thing to keep in mind as well as a lot of other things going on on their back end. Um, again, did a lot of research beforehand, um, read tons of news articles about them. And then of course you can look at their price history and then you can look at their overall uh, profile. So you can do that and hit add to pie. So I'm gonna go ahead and add to the pie. And then what I'm gonna do is close off this screen right here and then I can hit done because I'm just adding the one stock today. And then what I'm gonna do is on my next video, I'm gonna go ahead and add another one and then another one after that, and then start building up this dividend portfolio. If by chance you are a fan of dividend investing, please let me know what you would recommend when it comes to having a dividend in your portfolio. Of course, I'm still gonna do my own research, but if you have any suggestions, I will probably start looking at those first before looking at some other options. So with that being said there, we're gonna hit done on this platform there, and then it's gonna take us to this next page. Now on this page, you're gonna see at the top, it says total 101% of 100%. And what that means essentially is the fund has to be at 100% as far as where all the money is going to be placed. So as of right now, it just auto selected Disney at 1%, but I actually want this to be at 5% of my portfolio right now. Eventually I might increase it or decrease it on how I feel the company is going. But as of right now with their, you know, Disney streaming service that's gonna be coming out and the way they've been dominating the movie industry, I definitely feel like they have a lot more to move forward with. So I'm gonna start with 5% and I might start bumping that up more and more over time. So with that 5% at the top now, it does say 105% out of 100. So what we have to do is actually take some percentage out from some of these other companies. So I can choose to go through one of these and take less. And as I mentioned, we're gonna take a smaller position in the Vanguard S&P 500. So I'm gonna go ahead and minus that all the way down, which then brings us to a total of, of course, 100%. So just like that, we now have uh, a portion of our pie set up for Disney. Now it doesn't just automatically happen. Of course, it's gonna take a, a day or two to actually process through. Plus we wanna add that 10 bucks into our account which essentially is gonna be almost enough to fully fund that Disney portion by itself. So I'm gonna hit save. 
And of course, it's going to just confirm that we're going to save it to our profile. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Saving, saving, perfect. So we're going to close this off. And it, now it's going to show Disney over here. And you're going to see uh, towards that bottom there, you're going to see it in red at 0% slash 5%. What that means is out of the percentage of the actual fund, currently Disney sits at zero because there's no money towards it, at a goal of 5%. You can see Tesla at that 4.8 out of the five. That means because the fund is going down, it's less of the targeted portfolio amount that I want, um, mainly because of the fluctuation of the price right now. But that's what that kind of means is essentially saying that you want a certain percentage of your pie to encompass that individual stock or ETF or whatever you currently have in there. So now what we're going to do is actually go ahead and add $10 into this account. Now, of course, it's going to take time to transfer in and then it has to go through the trade during the day and then boom, you actually have ownership of that company. Now, M1 Finance, if you're not familiar, has fractional sharing, which is my favorite thing about this platform. Now, fractional sharing means you don't have to buy the full share of that company, which means for Disney, if we go back in here to actually, let me see if I can actually, can I actually pull that up? Hold on. I thought I could see it from like this spot, but let me go back into the research and just show you guys what I mean. So if we bring up the ticker Disney here, to own a full share of Disney in most other platforms, you're gonna have to spend $132.79, most likely a little bit more just because of the fluctuation of the, of the funds, but you'd have to put that much money down to be able to own one share. So that could be really tough for a lot of people when it comes to investing, but with M1 Finance, what you can actually do is have fractional shares, which means you own just small portions of the full company. And so if I actually go through and show you Microsoft, for example, this is really funny. With Microsoft, if you look here, I actually own 0.06561 shares. So I don't even have like half a share. I don't even have, of course, anywhere near a full share because I'm buying it in fractions. But I can do so in small amounts, which makes it easier for me to build up. Because if you're just getting started, one, you might be afraid to put a lot of money in, which is good. You don't want to put a ton of money in. I personally would prefer to get started smaller, like you see, and then build up over time as you build up, you know, the understanding, the knowledge and all these other things, you're going to get better at it. You know, I, I talk about this all the time where, you know, with riding a bike, you're not going to get good at riding a bike the second you get on one the very first time. You got to get some training wheels on, you got to get started, you got to fall off a few times, but over time you get better and then people start riding their bikes with no hands, all these crazy things, but they got started with it. So same thing with investing, get started small, get those training wheels on, practice and learn, and then over time you get better at these things. So with all that said, we still have to add money to our account. So we're going to hit this little arrow here and we're going to hit deposit. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add $10 into the fund and what that'll do is it'll pull that money from my personal bank account and put it into M1 Finance and then M1 Finance will go ahead and distribute that to all the funds based off of those percentages. Like I mentioned, because we added Disney in there with that 5%, it's most likely gonna go to a majority of Disney and then a little bit to some of the other ones. So we're gonna hit next and then it's just confirming everything. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and hit confirm there and just like that, we are now in the process of having 10 bucks added to the M1 Finance account. And then a majority of that is going to go into Disney as then we will now have a very, very tiny portion of ownership into Disney there. And hopefully what that will do for us is be able to give us out dividends um, over time as Disney does pay out twice a year on dividends. So I ended up purchasing Disney. I hope you guys guessed that if you were trying to guess which fund I ended up purchasing. As I mentioned, I will be releasing a new video every week showing you guys a new fund that I'm going to be buying. But let me know in the comments down below which fund do you want me to look into to add to my portfolio. Again, I will do all that research beforehand to make sure it's something I want to add. But I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments down below. So thank you so much for supporting me and making it all the way to this part of the video. As I mentioned, it really helps me out when it comes to growing this channel. If you want to watch more content from me, check out this video right over here. Make sure you're subscribed if you're not already, and I'll catch you in the next video.